Hi and welcome to Ashling's Answers, the channel where I answer questions to do with geography, politics and science, mostly because my parents are sick of me talking about this at the dinner table. Maps, 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 maps. A diagrammatic representation of an area of land or sea showing physical features, cities, roads, etc. So, maps tell the truth, right? Well, yes and no. No, if you believe that there's one truth that we're all heading towards, that's you realists. But yes, if you believe that there are multiple truths, that's for the relativists. But let's put that philosophical debate to one side and delve into why maps can lie using one particularly famous example which I'm sure you've come across in your daily lives. Now, it's pretty understandable that a map can't show everything about everywhere. Even in definitions of maps, there's a caveat that they're showing something in particular. For example, definitions include phrases like a map is a representation of an area or a map gives a particular type of information about an area. So those definitions take into account that it's impossible to put on a piece of paper everything about one place. So this means that maps never tell the whole story, which can be a problem because it means there's always someone making a decision about what is worth mapping and what should be shown on the maps. And unfortunately, this means that the personal biases of the people creating the maps are ingrained in the map even from the moment they decide to make one. And this is an issue because people are inclined to believe what they see, especially if they see it over and over again. A very simple and obvious example of nefarious mapping is in the colonial era. Europeans would seek to map areas they wanted to colonise. To justify European settlement, these colonial maps often depicted places as vast and empty and uninhabited, completely ignoring the settlements of the people who already inhabited that place. Another example is in the Cold War, where the United States published maps that showed the Soviet Union to be much bigger and more threatening than it actually was, using both size and colour and lots of different things as a form of propaganda to justify their military spending and their foreign policy. But people wouldn't get away with such overtly political and biased maps today, I hear your internal monologue saying. And hey, I'd like to think that too, but I've got some bad news for you, because this map, this map that you've seen maybe every day, it might have been up in your classroom at school, on your wall at home, in a book that you read. Yeah, well, this map is lying to you and we're gonna delve into why right now. So let's begin with how this map came about. This map was made by Flemish cartographer Gerardus Mercator in 1569. I couldn't find any evidence that this map was commissioned by the Pope to show the spread of Christianity, although I have seen people talking about it, I couldn't find a primary source to prove that. But instead, the projection that leads to this map was created because it makes navigation a lot easier. This map is useful for navigation because any straight line on the map is a line of constant true bearing, meaning that if you wanted to travel by boat from England to America, you could just work out the angle once and follow that on your compass, whereas on previous maps you would have to constantly um, recalculate the angle that you were travelling at. This map also maintains the shapes of countries, which can be useful to get an idea of their shape, but at the expense of distorting the area of the countries. The further you get from the equator, the more distorted the area of the countries are. So for example, Greenland, which is the often quoted example, looks the same size as Africa when Africa is 14 times bigger than Greenland. The thing is that there's always going to be distortion when you try and depict something spherical, like the world, on a flat map. As I said earlier, maps have a purpose and someone decides what they want to use the map for and as a result, what they're going to map and what they're going to include and what they're going to omit. The problem with this map is not in its purpose or its, its creation, it was designed for navigation and as a tool for that it's very useful. The problem lies in the fact that this map made for navigation just became adopted as the general world map that was used in classrooms to give people an idea of what the world looked like or how countries were distributed around the world, which is not what it was designed to do. 
And this is a problem because its adoption as the go-to world map does have the ability to influence people's view of the world. Because of the distortion by area, subconsciously this map could make people feel like Europe and North America are more important because of their size compared to other countries which are bigger in reality but seem smaller on this map. So yes, this map is not as benign as its prevalence would suggest. So what do you do with this information? There have been quite a few attempts to more accurately depict the area of different countries and continents, but this comes at the price of distorting their shape. There just isn't a perfect way to put a spherical globe onto a rectangular map. I think if I was going to use a world map, I would at least try to use a more rounded one, unless for some reason I was doing nautical navigation, in which case the earlier map is ideal. And I would also recognise the historical basis and intention of the map that I was using. Another point is that it's important not to take for granted the fact that Europe's in the middle of the map, because it really doesn't have to be. That came about as a decision in the late 1800s when it was decided that the Royal Observatory at Greenwich would be the position from which longitude was measured. But before that, different countries would put themselves in the middle of the map. So don't take that for granted. I think the wider lesson is that there's often so much more to things that we see and hear all the time than we realise. And it's really important to not take things for granted or accept things are just the way they are, because there's often a much bigger story behind them. So if you're planning on sailing anywhere, then this map is perfect. But if you want to use a world map for a different purpose, then maybe look at another kind, or show multiple different kinds of maps at the same time, as an attempt to show that none of them are perfect, but maybe in conjunction they could be really helpful. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. And if you have any questions about geography, politics or science, then let me know in the comments below and the next video could be an answer to something that you've been wondering about for a while. I would like to thank Hetty for suggesting the topic of this video in the comments of one of my earlier videos. On that note, I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you then!